Hey guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History. In the next few minutes, we're gonna take on the situation that's ever developing in Ukraine. In fact, we made a video a few weeks ago right there on the Ukraine protest, and now we're gonna take it to the next level, taking a look at what's happened since then, and especially as it relates to Crimea. So give me a few minutes and let's see if we can't grow your brain and make you acceptable for dinner party conversation. In the video I made a few weeks ago, I really kind of framed out uh, the concept that Ukraine was going through this kind of identity crisis between the West and the East. And then as that situation unfolded, I think it really changed from something that was about the European Union and Russia to something about human rights in Kiev. And uh, the protesters that stood up against uh, Viktor Yanukovych and his corrupt government won the day when a few days ago uh, Viktor Yanukovych took off to Russia. And today he even gave an interview where he basically said that he was still the leader of Ukraine and that he was illegally made to leave the country and that he'll be back. But certainly the people in Ukraine and Kiev have moved on. I'm starting an intern government and setting May 25th as the date for new elections so they can get it on by themselves. But not everybody feels that way. So Crimea is right directly underneath Ukraine and it's been an autonomous region that's been connected with Ukraine since 1991. If we rewind even further, I mean, you can go back you know, thousands of years and uh, the Ottomans and the Turks and the Greeks and the Byzantines and everybody and Peter, Paul and Mary have been in uh, Crimea in power. Um, if we kind of fast forward to the 19th century, you've heard of Florence Nightingale. Florence Nightingale, the uh, famous nurse, got her namesake in Crimea when the British and the Ottomans forces were fighting the Russians. Over 750,000 people died in the Crimea War in the 19th century. And then during the Russian Bolshevik Revolution, that's where the White Army really had its kind of strongest support was in the Crimea region. And in fact, at the end of that civil war, when the Bolsheviks were successful, they summarily executed 50,000 White Army prisoners. And then really Crimea became part of the Soviet Union. Um, even though in 1954, Joseph Stalin gave Crimea to Ukraine as a gift but of course, Ukraine belongs to the Soviet Union, so it was like Stalin gave a gift to himself. Let's talk a little bit about who lives in Crimea and what the situation today has become. So the majority population in Crimea is of Russians. These are ethnic Russians that moved to Crimea. Crimea is right on the Black Sea. It's like a hot spot baby for some relaxation. Not to mention that the Russian Black Sea fleet uh, sits in Crimea. Yalta, the island where Stalin and FDR um, and uh, Winston Churchill met, that's in Crimea. Crimea is like right in the center of it all. Um, but the majority population is Russian. Second is Ukrainians. These live in North Crimea because you can see on the map right there, it's situated, you know, in the southern end of uh, Ukraine, so that makes sense that the northern part would be Ukrainian. And then in the middle, we have about 20% of the population, maybe 15% that are Tatars. And Tatars are ethnic Muslims, and they are really on the side of Ukraine because in the 1950s, it was Joseph Stalin again, what are you doing, Stalin, who forcibly removed the Tatars from the Crimean region and moved them into central Russia. Since then, many of them have come back and call it their home, but every time that Russia says anything, the Tatars are like, I don't think so. So since the ouster of the president, who's now kind of hiding out in Russia, definitely the people of Kiev, they want him back. They want to put him on trial. Not to mention questions about all of the uh, extravagant, luxurious things that the guy owns in the palace and how he get the money for that, but we're not going to go there. In Crimea, you have tons of ethnic Russians that are seeing this really as a negative. They want to align themselves with Russia, and I'm sure that Putin and the Russians, they want Crimea back. Number one, it's got that Black Sea port, but they're really, I think, there's something in Putin about Russian nationalism and, you know, this should be part of Russia. So yesterday, some pro-Russian forces, uh, probably Crimeans, not the Russian army, but pro-Russians, um, went into the parliament. They raised the Russian flag. The Russian flag is flying over government buildings in uh, Crimea. Today, masked men, some of them wearing the uniform of the Black Sea Russian fleet without the official patch, surrounded the airports in Crimea. Um, there has been an increased activity in Russian military drills inside of Crimea. To remember that the Russians have deals with Ukraine in Crimea, so they have forces already in there. There's a heightened activity in the western part of Russia, the eastern part of Ukraine, where the Russians are now doing military drills. Not to mention the Russians have sent a battleship to Cuba. 
I don't know, maybe this is just war games, or maybe Putin is just saying, don't you dare. Either way, right now the situation's getting a little cray cray. The forces in Kiev, they say Crimea belongs to them. The Russians now believe that Crimea probably belongs to them. And if certainly you have the people of Crimea that are in the middle of all of this. And uh, we're going to have to see where it goes. But I'm telling you guys, keep your eyes on this one. Um, all conflicts have the potential to snowball into larger conflicts. This is a conflict that really has roots in the Cold War, but has its future sown in the 21st century. So you ask Qs, I don't know what's going to happen. But keep your eyes on the ball, because that's where they are right now. Crimea, baby. If you haven't checked out Hip Hughes History, click my face. We have over 250 videos that you can grow your brain for probably, I don't know, three or four weeks at least. So there you go, guys, where attention goes, energy flows. And I'm going to give a shout out. A shout out to freedom in the Ukraine and Crimea.